I think the building is made out of about 80 to 80, maybe even 90 percent of either natural or recycled and found materials. Had you ever built a house before? Uh, no, no. I've worked on building sites um, in my old job and seen modern construction quite a lot, but I never built a timber framed house or anything like that. I decided that I was going to buy a piece of land. Uh, I didn't know what bit of land or how big it was going to be. I uh, found this bit of land on eBay, surprisingly. I didn't know what I was going to build because the main thing about what I'm doing here is uh, not deciding what you want and then putting it there, but it's deciding what you need and then what resources you have around you to use. So the buildings that arise out of this land will be in shapes and forms that are dictated from what resources I have. Uh, the method I used to build it is called uh, cobwood or cordwood or stackwood, it has a few different names. The mortar that's binding it all together is uh, called cob. It's clay, sand and straw mixed together and doesn't really cost anything at all. I think there's something like seven tonnes of it in this building and it was all mixed with my feet. So you just kind of stomp on it with your feet until it's all mixed in. The turf roof is a, is a nice characteristic it makes it blend in to the woodland. I like the fact that uh, if you're maybe 50 meters away you can't even see it. Uh, the windows came out of my mum's next door neighbour's house. They were having their double glazing changed and I took the window units and they were going to go and skip. Uh, so the back window I found down an alleyway. Uh, it's a fridge door like a glass fronted fridge door and I sort of found it, I thought that would probably come in good use for the house and ended up the back window. Most of the cost was things like bits of pipe and uh, sort of the roof liner and stuff. I think maybe total cost is about three and a half, four thousand pounds, yeah. something like that. So yeah, this is my house where I live. It's pretty comfy. has all the modern things that you, a normal house has really. Um, I have fresh running uh, water from a spring just up the hill. Uh, I have normal plug sockets like in a normal house with a 240 volt supply which is uh, goes through an inverter in the shed. Each roof joist rests on the one before it so it ends up in a spiral pattern. It's self-supporting. Yesterday I left the door open in the evening and I think a bat got in here somewhere so I was woken up at four o'clock in the morning with a bat flying around. I'm supplying my own electricity, water, I have uh, solar power out on the so slope out there and I have a hydroelectric system which is generating power from the water in the little streams here. Uh, so yeah, the sun's going down now and the solar's not making much power. Um, my friend Hannah's coming over, so I'm going to turn the hydroelectric on and that will power everything throughout the night. And the water comes along from up the hill all the way up there down this length of pipe. It has about 26 psi of pressure. It squirts out a nozzle uh, about 30 feet a second, uh, enough to probably take the skin off your hand if you touched it. It's quite powerful. I had a fairly normal life in London, a uh, normal day job. Got up, went to work, uh, socialised at the weekends. I felt like I didn't have enough time to do all the different things I wanted to do. The, the idea of working for like two thirds of your life and having very little time to socialise and do hobbies and things, it just doesn't sit right. All the bills, there's mortgages, electric, water, internet, TV licences, insurances, just, I don't know, 
I, I earned good money, but everything just went. Everyone had their hand in my pocket until yeah, there was nothing left. I did have a girlfriend at the time. Uh, the building process and the moving process of it all, I think, was a big contributor to, um, uh, to us separating. Uh, we kind of went our separate ways just before I moved here permanently. I thought I was going to be doing this with a partner, but I ended up uh, moving here on my own. When I was um, in the tent for like a month on my own, I, it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Well, looking back at it now, I, it doesn't seem that bad, but I remember at the time it was pretty bad. Yeah, lots of times I just uh, thought, oh, what am I doing, basically? Yeah, I'm quite proud of it. Um, when I first moved here, there was nothing here. It was just an open field that had been grazed on and I'm slowly improving it. And even though I don't earn much now, I probably have more money now than I did then. My outgoings here are very low. Um, I have very few bills, so I don't really have the stresses of having to wake up and earn a certain amount of money. So I do have an internet connection, but it's wireless. Uh, that is the only connection I have really to other infrastructure. Uh, I don't think I'd want to live with that internet so useful educationally. So once I built the house, I needed to build the little workshop to move my tools. I have more power than I actually need for the most part. I have a little device here, which I can check to see how much power I've got at any one point. I did most of the building alone. Um, I probably did 80% yeah, of it alone, I think. If I get help from volunteers, um, my friend Hannah, she helps quite a lot. Uh, my girlfriend's been helping too. Um, yeah, I get offered lots of help. People are quite happy to come and volunteer. Uh, I met Dot online on a dating website and because I moved here I didn't really know anyone so that was really my only thing to do and it's pretty hard to meet people when you're in a field. When I was going through Tinder and I saw that Chris was um, building this house um, I was just really intrigued. I, I thought it was something completely different and I couldn't believe that it was something that was actually quite close to where I live. It's quite a new relationship with Dot, but we're um, getting on really well and she seems to enjoy staying here. Yeah, since then I've, um, I've helped build the toilet, the new toilet, and um, that's about it really. <laughs> it still hasn't got a door, which is actually the only thing she requested, uh, but the door will come next. This house is kind of designed to last probably around 20 years with minimal maintenance. It could last a lot longer than that with quite major maintenance, but it's not built to last forever. I wanted to be able to live on the piece of land for a number of years before I did major works like building another house because I wanted to see how the land reacted through different seasons, so I knew um, when I build the house that will hopefully be the house I live in for the rest of my life, I'll know that it's in the right place. I didn't put those considerations into this place um, because it's not as important. But um, while I live in this place here, I can monitor the land and I can decide where I want to build the house. My life is hundreds of times richer now, I feel more fulfilled and happier than I've ever been before. I was talking to someone about like nostalgic kind of looking back at what, what age would you go back to if you, you know, if, if you go back to any age. And I thought, well, I probably wouldn't, I'd probably go back not even a month. But, yeah, I wouldn't want to go back far to where I didn't meet Dot yet. So, you know, yeah, uh, right now I'm kind of the happiest I've ever been. <laughs>